Hey guys, hope all is well. Um, it's been a long time since I've been sitting down at this chair playing chess. Um, it's been sort of a busy time for me. Um, I'm sort of fetching a full-time job. I'm trying to figure out that. I'm, uh, I was at the World Championship for a while. I did those videos for a while. You guys saw some of the material I did. I got tired of recording videos at the end because I was tired of recording draws. Um, just to be frank, so uh, I just got tired of analyzing draw after draw after draw. It's getting a little depressing. <laughs> so um, uh, I might, I may or may not get back to the the last few rounds of the event. I I think I got to round eight, um, if I'm not mistaken, and then I'd have to go over some tiebreak games as well. I may or may not get back to it. I'm sure most of you guys know Carlson is still our world champion. And uh, he finished in style uh, with this beautiful queen sacrifice in the last tiebreak game to win and secure uh, recapturing the title. But at the same time, the match at a whole was sort of blah. I mean, a lot of draws and um, a lot of long games without much going on. And um, I think uh, I think chess missed an opportunity uh, in the in this match. I think uh, we definitely could have gotten a little bit more. I think the organization was poor. And um, I think we could have gotten just a better match. Uh, I think if the time controls could sped up a little bit, uh, I, I love the chess purists and the gatekeepers aren't a fan of this, but I think it would make a huge difference in the marketability of chess. And I think, um, I think we need to make some serious changes to the format of the match as well if we're going to ensure sub substantive changes to the, uh, to the system. So... Um, with those preliminary thoughts in mind, I'm just going to get right to it and we're going to play some, uh, well, I'm going to play some Blitz in the five-minute pool. It's been a while and uh, see how that goes. So uh, I've uh, placed my lot, I guess you could say, um, and uh, I'm waiting and uh, I'll sip some tea. I, 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 it's cold now, so uh, I got to drink tea pretty much whenever I have the chance just to stay warm and, uh, and uh, sort of kick the colds that sort of come this time of year. I was actually uh, sort of battling a more serious cold a few weeks ago, and uh, I think I got under control, but I'm still, you know, a little bit gravelly at some time, gravelly with my voice at some times. So anyways, all right, d4, that's my main move. f5, the Dutch, I don't have much respect for, and I think you're going to see why in a moment, actually. Uh, I just find the Dutch to just weaken too many squares too quickly. And, um, yeah, that's my opinion. Um, and we're going to see, and hopefully I can exploit some of these uh, problems with the Dutch. Um, I'm going to go knight f4 now. And now I gave the two bishops, which is not something you necessarily always want to be doing or ever want to be doing. But I think it's for, uh, I think it's a meaningful uh, strategy here um, because uh, there's so many weaknesses in the, uh, in, uh, in Black's position, in my opinion. Um, so, anyways, I'm very happy to see Knight C6 because this pin is also very annoying. Um, with the Bishop uh, Bishop A4 and this qu this pin on the Queen is pretty annoying, I think. Hmm. I'm not impressed by Bishop B4 to be honest. I mean, I guess it does that. It bothers my knight, but I don't think it's a threat, so I'm just gonna castle. Um, yeah, you might be wondering why this h3 move I played earlier. Um, my idea was actually to play g4. That's typically what you do in these structures, but I sort of changed plans midway through, which is never what you want to be doing. But uh, I just figured it was the right thing to do at that juncture. Um, hmm. I'm not loving my position because I played h3, but I gotta sort of keep it moving. Hmm. My idea with this a3 move is now actually to go knight b4 and and uh, exploit the pin on the um, on this uh, this knight on c6. Um, but yeah, my position is not lovely. I wish I, I wish this h3 move wasn't there because my my king side now provides a hook with that h h3 move. The, a hook is how I describe these pawn moves you make in front of your king, because once you make these hooks, it's much easier to blast open the um, uh, 
the king side, so that's a bit of a concern. But I don't think it was entirely correct to allow knight takes c6, because now this pin can be very, very annoying long term. Hmm. I'm going to go king h1. It's a little bit prophylactic. I'm just sort of looking at g4. Yeah, I thought I saw this g4 move was going to be played. And uh, I just wanted to make sure there was no funny business. Uh, and then I'm going to go f4 just to sort of close off any possibilities of, of white, of black sort of playing f4 himself and sort of opening up the line of the queen. And I think with this move, I sort of slowly blockaded uh, uh, the position enough where I don't think my king is in danger. Because if f f4 now, like, black can choose to play en passant with g takes f3, but if en passant isn't played, then the bishop, yeah, okay, it wasn't played. This bishop on d6 is sort of locked for for the sh forever, and um, and uh, I think it's, 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 I don't think there's any meaningful place for, uh, for black to put the king right now, so... Yeah, I'm not again. I'm not really so concerned about um, about uh, rook g8 because it's it's just one piece getting into the attack. So white's gonna need more. Black's gonna need more than one piece to harass me. So I'm gonna play rook g1, which is prophylactic. It's sort of the idea is that if uh, if black plays g takes h3, I'm gonna uh, be able to meet the rook on the g file with my own rook with a g takes h3. And uh, if given time, yeah, I want to play queen d3 and connect my rook, so I'm going to do that. And uh, I think I have a decent position. Now that being said, it is relatively close, and I have to find a way to open it up. So uh, king d8, very interesting. Um, I guess the idea is to shuttle the king elsewhere. And so I'm going to play bishop b3. The idea is to play knight a4 and um, essentially just harass the rook away from the eight, from protecting the a6 pawn so I can win it. So knight a4 comes now, and now I quite like my position, because now I can take on a6 if I want it at some point. Okay, I didn't expect that. Do I want to play c4? I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play if rook b5. Now I'm gonna play c4. I was a little bit impatient, but I think it's a good move. I think my king is safe. I think the key thing, the key takeaway is my king is safer than than black's king, and um, this bishop on d6 is really restricted by all my pawns and all the dark squares. So I think that even after the trade of this light squared, the light squared bishops, yeah, uh, black has a bishop for a knight, but I think my king is safer, and I think that should be. Uh, that sort of uh, gets at the overall evaluation of the position. And I can't imagine uh, white, a black doing anything but taking this bishop on c4 because then I just pick off, if, if the rook just stays there, I just pick it off and win the exchange. So uh, I think I'm all right. But uh, I think some of the key things here to consider is that I have a really nice space advantage with my pawns. And also, all my pieces are sort of doing something. Um, okay, my rook on a1 is not hasn't moved you know, away from that square, but at least it's it's the rooks are connected, so the rook on a1 is serving the purpose of protecting the other one, and uh, that's a good thing. Queen f7 is an interesting try. The point is that if I take this exchange, white has really good con control in the dark squares. So if I play bishop takes c6, if, if I play bishop takes b5. He'll take back and then play bishop d5 and pressure me along the dark squares, um, which is an interesting idea, actually. So how to deal with that? I think I'm not going to – maybe I shouldn't rush to take the exchange. Maybe that's how I should deal with that. I'm going to play bishop takes e6. And after queen takes e6, my idea is to play knight c3. And the point is just to hit the rook now. Uh, and also, more importantly, take control of the light squares in the center. Because now that my knight's on c3, okay, this rook, uh, the rook moves away, and, well, I think uh, I control the d5 and the e4 squares, which is pretty important. Hmm. I 
I want to blast open the middle, but I'm not sure that's advisable. So I'm going to go rookie one. Prepare it a little bit. Um, okay, queen d7, I think is a little bit passive, so I'm going to go queen c4, hit that rook on, uh, on g8. And uh, I, I still like my position because my, my pawns are controlling the bishop. So uh, if I just maneuver my, my pieces around just a little bit more, I think I'll be able to get something going. Um, so, okay, rook g6, a little bit passive. Um, hmm. I'm going to go knight a4. Just to harass, I can always harass this. Uh, uh, I can always harass a little bit. Wow, Queen G7 is very aggressive, uh, but is it good? I don't think so. I think I'm going to try and win this f5 pawn. I think my it's more important that I win the f5 pawn than giving up this flank pawn because now I might be able to open the file. If I open the file, it might be good for me. And rook g3 I don't love because I have knight e4 now. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I just like my position now because I'm going to play queen takes h3. And I have, I've, I'm up a pawn, and I have really good control of all of the um, sort of relevant squares. So um, now I'm going to go g4, which is cute because Anpasan is impossible uh, because of uh, because uh, I would have won the queen, and now I'm just winning because now I have, I have a clear pawn up. Uh, Oh no, I just blundered my knight. Oh shoot, that's not what I was supposed to do. I think I'm still better though, because I have this pawn avalanche. Um, and yeah, I quite like my position in any case. Okay, and uh, my opponent flagged. I did blunder at the end, just right there. Um... But I, mean, I think it was overall a pretty clean game. Um, again, the Dutch, I'm not a huge fan of. I mean, you just sort of... This this system where you just weaken the, all the dark squares and you push your F-pawn, and I just think it's 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 bad for your health to play so anti-positionally. And then the double pawns are, you know... I can, of course, like, I give the two bishops to give up the double pawns, but um, this type of structure, I think, even though black can be okay, it's... Um, it's just in practice a lot harder to play, uh, a lot harder to play black than it is to play white, and um, yeah, that means something, I think. Um, the one mistake I made besides blundering a piece at the end was uh, this h3 move. If I shouldn't play h3 and castle. I shouldn't combine those ideas. If I'm going to play h3, I should probably castle queenside, and creating this hook was not necessarily the smartest thing. But much later in the game, uh, allowing this knight takes these six stuff was not probably so great. And again, my pawn structure is just a little bit more fluid than Black's is because of the nature of the Dutch. Uh, with these double pawns, it's tough to really get something going. And once I played f4, I effectively closed up shop for those the bishops. So um, there was not, even though uh, White had the, oh no, Black had the two bishops, it didn't mean much. So clean game. Let's see what happens next. I'm going to wait in the pool, and uh, we'll see. Um, I'm really excited, actually. Um, obviously, I haven't played like a chess tournament in a while, but um, I'm actually going to play one right after Christmas. Um, I'm going to Copenhagen for uh, uh, two and a half weeks, uh, which is uh, really like a second home to me, to be honest. I, I love the city, and... Um, uh, I'm half Danish, uh, as some of you may know, and um, and it's always great to go back because uh, I have a um, 
the, the chess club I play for there has a very, very large place in my heart. Um, it's just a, uh, Upo Skak or Upo Chess is like a really, really fun chess club. Um, and I really like a lot of the people that were there and, um, chess, chess was really fun, uh, when I was in Denmark. Um, it's always fun. There's always a great atmosphere, um, great spirit around the club. And, uh, I'm looking forward to getting some of that. I think there's definitely been somewhat of a renaissance in the U S in terms of chess clubs where there's stuff going on, uh, if you think about the, um, the St. Louis uh, Chess Club, that's definitely a club that's uh, been really great on, on the rise. But the, most of these clubs don't have this a, a really great atmosphere. Like I think about the Marshall Chess Club, and uh, the Marshall is a place I grew up in in my teens, so I'm getting better at chess. But it's also a place, you know, that's pretty seedy at times. So you, you wish you could – I wish it, you know, it wasn't like that, but it is. Anyways, uh, back to the game. I'm playing a Sicilian Rossellino, uh, which is pretty much uh, what I normally do when I'm playing against um, Knight C6. I think uh, I think in, in practice it's just easier to play white. Again, I'm giving up my bishop for double pawns, but it's a bit hard to uh, to get uh, the light squared bishop to a meaningful square, and I think bishop B7 is already an incorrect place for it. Um, and in the meantime, I'm going to sort of uh, just develop my pieces and sort of wait a little patiently. And, and I'm actually planning to go bishop h6 now, which I think is uh, a decent idea. Um, but he doesn't want to trade bishops, which is probably a good thing. Uh, I, I just I think that it's a little bit easier to play uh, the white side of these structures. Um, that's that. Um, I do have to come with a plan, which is something that I struggle with sometimes. I'm going to try and go 92, uh, and uh, if I'm allowed. And uh, I think 92 and then knight g3 get Rui Lopez knights. Okay, bishop takes c3 I think is a bad decision. Um, I'm going to take with the b pawn because it uncovers the, uh, the bishop on b7 that's hanging. But I don't think it's so great to trade this dark squared bishop because um, it's really the, the one piece that sort of uh, that's protecting the king, and now there's all these weak dark squares around, so I don't think that was such a great idea by um, by by black. I mean, uh, and also the a3 pawn actually isn't hanging right now because I have rook a1, so I'm going to try and go forward. I think the bishop on a6 and the queen on a5 are a little bit off sides, so I'm going to try and go forward on the king side and try to get some attack going, um, because now my bishop on h6 is controlling the dark squares around black's king. So if I can only get a queen to g7 in checkmate, that'd be great. So I'm going to try and think about getting that primitive goal uh, going. Okay. I'm going to take this. Rook takes b8. And uh, I think the problem, that the problem is now you have to play rook takes at b8, but now I go e takes d6, and I, I have control of the e-file. Or I can even go e6. I'm spoiled for choice. Do I go e6 or do I go? Yeah, I'm gonna take. And now I get the open file, which is always good. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go queen f4 now. And now there's a lot of threats. The d6 pawn for one is being hit. I'm also thinking about going rook e7. And uh, I don't think uh, white will last long here because. The dark squares are just too weak, and there are too many pieces that I have huddled huddled around Black's king. So, pretty much, uh, I think this is a winning position. If queen takes c3, I have queen takes d6, or maybe rook e7, uh, because my rook on e1 isn't hanging, and uh, I just I just have a lot better piece coordination. So, okay, so this happened, and. Yeah, I'm going to go queen takes d6. And, uh, man, I really want to go queen takes d7 and then rook e8 mate. But actually, after queen takes d7, there's queen takes e1, which would be a very cold shower. So, hmm. So I think I should, I should still rook e7 or queen e7.
I'm going to go queen e7. The point is, is that the rook on d8 is hit, and there isn't, and I'm threatening queen e8 as well. So, uh, and I'm also threatening queen takes d7 and rook e8 mate. So, um, yeah, so queen f6 is a blunder because now I have queen takes d7, and if rook takes d7, I have rook e8 mate. Um, and this is actually a perfect example of why the, yeah, uh, black resigned. This is actually a perfect example of why giving up that uh, g7 bishop was so ill-advised because uh, once the fianchetto, once the fianchetto bishop was gone, and the fianchetto is a triangle pawn variation around a triangle of pawns around the king, it's called a fianchetto. Once that fianchetto was gone, just the weak, uh, the fianchetto bishop was gone. Those weak squares were just too significant. So I just crowded my piece around them, and then, boom, attack. All right, he, now we got an IM. It's more stronger opponent, so I'm excited about that. And uh, let's see how this goes. Hmm. I'm going to try and take on c4 if allowed, and then protect the pawn with b5. That's the idea with this system. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and I'm going to be allowed to do it, which is good. Um, yeah, I'm going to go b5. And just, just, if e5, I'm going to go h6, and it just gets really sharp. And um, I don't even know if it's correct, to be honest, but um, I think it's interesting. And that's what matters to me in this position. So knight takes g okay, knight takes g5 was an option. It wasn't played. So now I'm gonna go knight d5. And I think and I'm gonna I have an extra pawn, but uh black is gonna have white might have compensation in the form of um in the form of uh my weak my weak pawn advances on the king side might come to bite me because now castling on that side looks a little bit ill advised. So um but I like my position. I think it's a. I think a pawn is a pawn, and um, it's really hard for me to see. I don't think uh, White's compensation is super overwhelming, so um, I think I have an advantage here, actually. Okay, Queen B one is cute. The idea is that if I go Knight takes E four, Knight takes A four, there's Rook takes A four, then Queen and Queen takes B seven, so I can't do that. But I can go Knight D five. And uh, I think uh, I think my knight is pretty well placed there. Okay. Um, go bishop c6 uh, just to sort of get my bishop out of the line there. And uh, knight d2. Okay, interesting. I'm gonna go knight. No bishop g. No bishop g7. I'm gonna go h5 and try to trap this. Uh, try to trap this bishop. I'm not. I'm not gonna castle. Castle there. So I might as well continue to push the pawns. So yeah, I like this. And now knight a knight f4 is annoying because now this bishop on e2 is hanging. And uh, yeah, I quite like this actually. I'm gonna go. This is really aggressive, but I'm gonna go g4. And the idea is that if f takes g4, I'm gonna play queen d5 and have really, really good pressure on the long diagonal. Um, so uh, I'm playing really aggressive. It's amazing. I don't normally do this, but uh, something has gotten into me. And now I'm also threatening knight h3 check, which is devastating because if g takes h3, if queen h1 mate, so. All my pieces are sort of flooding the king side right now, and I'm, I'm not so sure how white's going to stop it, to be honest. I also have knight e2 check, which is a threat, um, because the bishop can't capture because queen takes g2 mate. So um, I think I'm pretty close to winning, actually. And yeah, knight, uh, knight h3 check here wins, um, because after, uh, he can't take the knight. So after king h1, I just play knight takes f2, and that should be it. Um, and I don't even know why, uh, why white is still playing the game, to be honest. 
So I'm just going to go knight d3. Um, and okay, knight e4 threatens knight f6 check, so I happen to play bishop e7 and just cover that. And um, I think I have a winning position. I'm a little bit surprised that uh, that my opponent is still playing. Um, but I can blunder. I've done it before. I am talking during the game, which is never the best thing to do. So, um, hmm. I need to open up some more diagonals, so I'm going to play b4, because I want to open up... I want to get my other bishop on e7 involved, so uh, this is pretty aggressive, but I need to get my bishops open. This has gotten a little bit messy. I shouldn't have allowed... I was, I was a little bit too gung-ho about all these sacrifices. Um, but again, I am a piece up. I still should be winning, so that's going to be the goal. Um... I might have mucked it up just a little bit. I'm feeling uber aggressive, so I'm actually going to play rook takes h3. And the idea is actually now to go... I'm sacking... I'm giving up a rook for... Uh, uh, for um, the... Um, for, and I'm going to get the knight back. I'm giving up a rook for a knight and a pawn, but the point is that my bishop on the long diagonal might be able to do some really crazy stuff. So that's the goal. Is now I'm threatening queen g2 and queen g2 check, which is big. And uh, that should be decisive. Um, now I'm going to go rook. Oh man, I can't go rook b8. Now I'm going to go a5 maybe. Yeah, I'm going to go a5, and now I'm threatening bishop b4 check. And uh, there are just too many threats here. Um, my bishops are really reigning supreme in, the, in this board, and the king on e1 is too weak. So uh, I, I doubt I'm going to lose. I just, I'm not going to lose this one, I promise. Um, uh, yeah, okay, so I'm going to play bishop b4 now and pick off the, uh, the queen, and uh, my opponent resign. Nice game, I think. It was pretty clean. Um, attacking the king, which is always great. Getting my pieces out, developing. And basically, I just held on to the pawn. But more importantly than that, white's compensation wasn't sufficient. And um, I think somewhere around here, um, somewhere around here with this queen b1, I was a little bit suspicious about. But rook c1 is... Knight d2 is really suspicious, because now I can go h5, and I'm threatening to trap this bishop... And I sort of started to take over the initiative. I got a lot of moves in with tempo, with like h4, and then knight f4, another tempo gaining move, attacking the bishop. And then g4, another tempo gaining move, and then queen d5. And when you get several tempo gaining moves in a row, um, where you're sort of dictating the pace, that really, um, that really spells a bad sign for your opponent. So, clean game. Um... And wow, I get the same opponent again. This uh, so let's see how it goes. I'm white now, so uh, um, hmm. e6. Like you can always tell, like when someone plays e6, move uh, uh, move um, move to move one against d4. You can tell they're uh, they they're willing to go into the French. So um, always interesting to sort of get to see those nuances. Um, I obviously did not want to play the French, so I sort of declined that invitation. Um, and yeah, I just, I don't get my, my favorite beloved setup against the Dutch here, but this is also a reasonable setup. Um, I tend to prefer the anti-Dutch systems because you take, you take black out of what they're typically trying to do. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I typically go for those. Um... I don't love my double pawns uh, because 
can sort of white can sort of play a black can sort of play against them by playing c5 right now, which he does. So I have to break open this position ASAP. And I'm gonna try to do that by playing bishop d3 and e4. Because if I'm able to break open the position, then maybe the e6 pawn is just as weak as my double pawns. And that's that would be a really nice desired outcome. So the question is if I'm in time. That's always the question when you're playing chess. Are you in time to do the things you want to do? Uh, and I can't play e4 now because my bishop on f4 is hanging. So the answer is no, I'm not in time yet. So I'm going to drop this one back. But now knight f6 is going to be played uh, to sort of keep the e4 square in check. And I'm not in time yet, which is so frustrating. Um, so I'm going to go knight g5, which actually has the benefit of controlling the e4 square, but also uh, hitting against... Um, hitting, hit, pr 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 uh, protecting the e4, pr hitting against e6 and protecting e4. So I was wondering if I could play e4 now. I don't know though. Tough to say. I'm gonna go for it. If h6, my idea was to play knight takes e6, uh, and then and then e takes f5 and sort of sack a piece, but maybe get some pressure. Um, so that's my idea. I don't think it's entirely correct. Um, okay, so my opponent didn't go for it, so now I can play knight takes e4, which I'm, I don't mind, because, um, I think there's pressure against this e6 pawn. That's, that's sort of my, the point here, is, uh, I thought there was enough pressure that this, this sort of position would be a great outcome for me. Although maybe I'm not so sure. Black gets c takes d4 here, and maybe queen c5 or queen c6. Queen e7 is passive, so now I can go queen e2 and just gang up on the e6 pawn. So I think I have an advantage here, actually. Um, I'm just going to continue to gang up. Um, wow, king f7 is not a move you want to have to make. Um, that's a sign that I'm better, I think. Um, I'm going to go bishop g3. Uh, the idea is just a go bishop h4 maybe. Um, also, I might have some other things in the cards. Um, hmm. I think rook e8 is a mistake because it hang because it's unprotected. So if I go queen h5 check now, which I'm going to do, I think this is tough because if king g8, I have rook takes e6, which I don't think my opponent saw. The point is that if you take multiple times on e6, queen takes e8 happens. And uh, after queen takes e8, bishop f8 is the only move to block the check. And then, unfortunately, there's the queen on e6 is actually hanging. So I actually think I got a cute tactic in. And uh, now I'm going to go queen e2, keeping this pin. And okay, king f7 is a nice try, but now I'm going to go d5. And uh, I think I'm winning here. But you always got to prove it, which is tough. So I'm going to take here, take here, and now bring my king in and uh, get my king to d3. And then I have an extra pawn on the on the, um, on the the on the king side. So I think that should mean something. So um, we're all good. And this king is uh, on a6 is doing some crazy ninja stuff, trying to uh, trying to get get all the way to uh, uh, to uh, to a3. I'm gonna go bishop c1 just to make sure the king stops. Uh, the king can't go to a3, and that escapade is stopped. And then I'm just gonna continue to push my pawns, which I think is never a bad plan. Um, I'm going to go f4, f5, and I, I just think this is losing. Um, but we'll find out shortly whether I was right or wrong. Hmm.
I don't think black can afford to actually keep the king. I think black runs out of moves. I don't think black can afford to keep the king on a4 and the bishop on h6. So I'm just going to sort of stall a little bit. And yeah, now I get to push my own pawn because I'm not pinned anymore. And uh, it's tough. And uh, now that my king's on b2, the king has, is not going to get in anymore, so um, I think I'm all right. I'm not going to allow b4 to be played. And now I'm going to go bishop h6 and bishop g7 and then f6 and just push the pawns. And uh, I, I didn't play this ending totally perfectly because um, I definitely shouldn't have allowed uh, black to get so active with the king um but at the end of the day i'm still winning which is good and now the, the king can't even get through so i'm going to try and improve the position of my king so i'm going to go because the king literally cannot get through uh so i'm just going to improve my king which is always good and then gradually improve a little bit more. So now, now I'm going to go d6, and now d7 is a threat. Um, so um, pretty much there's nothing that uh, can be done. Because now I'm going to just collect, push my a pawn, and then that's it. So... Two wins in a row against this IM, that's good, and uh, clean sheet so far, uh, holding all the games. Um, I am definitely was probably itching to play chess because uh, I'm just uh, playing really cleanly, so that's nice. Um, I think uh, I mean, in this game, uh, I definitely got this position after knight g5. I think when I played e4, definitely h6 should have been considered. My idea with h after h6 was going to be to sack the knight when knight takes e6 and then f takes, and then e takes f5. Um, but uh, definitely h6 should be considered here. And then after this, you pl you let me play against one weak pawn. That's like golden. It's like a dream of mine to, to play against weaknesses. So I'll take it. And, uh, and then even I see tactics when uh, when their weaknesses abound. I think that's the thing that people, a lot of people sort of get drawn to is tactics and they want to force tactics. But my position on that is, has always been, if you play methodically, the tactics will come. They will just, they'll be a natural product of having really good pieces everywhere. And you see here, I have somewhat of an Alakine's gun. Um, that's when you have the, all the heavy pieces lined up. So I have my two rooks and the queen lined up. And also my, my bishop is is pretty decently placed and my king is safer than blacks and then when you have all these overwhelming advantages all of a sudden things open up so that's what happened here so i'm gonna put myself in the queue again and uh let's see um it's pretty good i mean i'm uh, pretty impressed with my my chess playing so far I expect it to be way rustier than this because um, I am I haven't, I mean, I still think about chess pretty much every day. Like, I'm definitely uh, looking at chess every day. But it's one thing to sort of, you know, to look at, and it's another thing to play uh, Blitz games. 
And of course, I mean, Blitz is not sort of the real, most traditional chess, you know, but it's something. Ah, B3. Never was a fan of this stuff. Um, you can play E5. Although B3 players always know what to do against E5, because that's probably what they see the most. So I was like D5 and Bishop G4. And the idea is that after Bishop H5, they have to go for E4, which is this pawn sacrifice. The point is that if you take, again, there's Queen B5 checks. So you don't want to fall for that. So I think Knight C6 is what you're supposed to do. Oh, it's not. It's C6. Oh, I've done this before. I blundered a piece. I couldn't allow takes on B7, so... Oh, that's so disgusting. I've done this before. I literally have done the same thing before. I think I made a video where I did this, where I said, don't do not do this when you play against B3. So now I'm just a piece down for a pawn because I missed the queen B5 trick. Oh, that's so disappointing. So, so disappointing. Um, but, you know, it, I, I've had worse. I've been more than a piece down before, so let's make the most of the, of the journey. Um... Oh, that sucks, though. It really does. All right. Um, you can go G5. I have to get, get I have to be aggressive, try to get something going before black is fully coordinated. So this is this is my idea, to go like this. And then I'm going to go bishop H6, hit against the D2 pawn. i got to be aggressive here. All right. That, now my aggression has failed. Um, hmm. King b8 before I I, uh, I lose a, a queen or something. So right, knight takes e4. Sort of have to do that. Uh, I'm going to go f6. Make sure I don't hang my rook too. But it's so disappointing when you blunder like that. It's just like... You sort of question why you play chess. Um, it's just one of those things. Uh, and I can't trade queens now because that would just be basically losing immediately so I'm gonna try and get something going but it's so it's it's just not this is such an ugly position to be frank um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm sending a tiny trap yeah with Bishop takes uh, all right, now I gotta double my rooks. I gotta get something going. That's my chance to get something going on uh, on these uh, with doubling my rooks and uh, all my pieces are pretty well placed. That's the thing. Um, it's just I'm down a piece, <laughs> so uh, you can't. It's hard to win like that. But all my pieces are really well placed. I am putting up somewhat of a fight, um, so I could pat myself on the back for that. But. Nice threatening checkmate, which I don't like. It's a malicious threat. Clear and present danger, as they say. No c5. Defend vertically against rook takes b7 or queen takes b7. But now rook c4 is going to be played, probably. And, uh, yeah. I'm lacking some... Sc I'm, uh, I'm worse. You know, rook c8. Now I'm hoping that I can get b5 in, which would be fantastic. Um, if I could get in b5, then the rook is actually trapped. So, um, yeah, he hasn't done, he's done well to sort of, you know, put pressure on me and stuff, but, uh, I am making some gains, some small gains. What do I do now? Yeah, I'm going to trade. That's surprising. Rook takes b4 is a little surprising, I must say. I didn't expect that. I'm going to double my rooks, because that never hurt anyone. And to be honest, I, I feel a lot better about this vision than I did 10 moves ago, because now his king is a little bit weak, not majorly weak at all. It can just go to a1, and then he can double the rooks. King a1 would be strong here. But I might have some ideas of sacrificing somehow. 
Oh my god, look at this guy. So eager to trade queens. That's annoying. I have to do it though, but that's so annoying. That sort of takes away any of the counterplay I envisioned having. That's so annoying. Um, annoying and strong. Annoying and strong. Hmm. Now he's just he's just gonna continue to try to trade pieces, which is the right thing to do. You you trade when you're up material. Um, it's just not what I need to see happen. Um, so um, this one will probably be over shortly. Um, I can only put on so so much of a fight here. Um, man, that's so annoying though. Because I've, I've fallen for that trap before in the opening, and it's just like, like, fool me once, you got me, but fool me twice, like, what am I doing? What am I doing? The good news is I am trading a lot of the pawns, which is a, a small gain. Um... Hmm. So I'm putting up somewhat of a fight, but I mean, honestly, I mean, it's not nothing special. Nothing special. And I blunder my rook. Resign. That's annoying because that, that shouldn't happen. I mean, it really shouldn't happen. Uh, I've looked at this position before. I was explaining the trap with queen b5, and then I allow it anyway. I, I can, basically can't allow queen b5. If I turn the engine here, I'm just curious what it says. I have my own ideas about it, but yes, yeah, c6. You just protect the b5 square so the queen can't go there and hit your b7 pawn and your h5 bishop. But after knight c6, you're just losing because you don't, you know, you don't solve that task. So after queen b5, you're like, b7, if you move your bishop to g6, queen takes b7, it's your knight and your rook, and it threatens bishop b5, check. So you're just sort of screwed. Uh, and uh, the first line of the engine is really funny. If you go e5, queen takes b7, knight g7, and then eventual king d7 after bishop b5, that's just unacceptable. So um, hopefully that's the last time I fall for that trap. Um but uh, fair enough. I mean, I, I won a lot. Of, I won a decent amount of games this session, and uh, I think I can be pleased with my return to chess, uh, you could say, or my return to the pool. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, I definitely uh, plan to not take such a long hiatus next time, so I think I'll, I'll be back very soon. Thanks for watching.